Everything that I do musically, I aim to be no genre. Can't put expectations on what you think something's gonna sound like. From a really young age, I kind of was always a storyteller. I've always considered myself to be a writer of a bunch of different things. I wrote a bunch of skits when I was a kid. I wrote a lot of short stories. My imagination was definitely running wild. Growing up, there was just constant singing in the house. But as a kid, I was really quiet and shy, and I didn't have like a crazy voice. Very different than I am now. The only thing is that I was a very observant, and I think I still am. I feel like a lot of people have this conception that stars are born as stars. I just don't think that's true. Junior, what if you were really 26 years old? I ended up going to a boarding school for high school, so I was living on a campus. It was just a totally different world for me. No one knew who I was, and I felt like for the first time ever, I could kind of create my own identity. I tried to fit in, but didn't. I'm different, yeah, I know. And I just decided, okay, I'm just gonna tell people that I'm an artist. And I just took on this whole persona because I felt like it was an opportunity to try something different. So, there was this open mic event called Ice House. And I went up and performed an original song. And it was kind of the first time that like a big group of people had heard me singing and they just went crazy and it threw me off because I was like, oh, they like this. I don't know, it was the first real taste of feeling like I did what I wanted to be doing. I'm going cross country. I won't stop running till I fall where I belong. Being in Atlanta was a period of a lot of sacrifice for me. When I moved to Atlanta, I was in a corporate office working a 48-hour work week and then going to the studio every night. I was writing a song a day to two songs a day to three songs a day and ended up writing a few thousand songs. When I gave up the job to do music full time, especially, money was tight. There were days that I definitely broke down. There were days that I wasn't able to create anything at all. Usually when I create, I end up watching a lot of sports and primarily basketball. The game itself is very creative. You draw up plays in the moment. As a songwriter, that's something that I try to remember. It doesn't really matter what genre I'm creating. Whatever that song wants to be is kind of what helps inform what direction I go sonically. There was an assumption that I should be working on exclusively R&B and hip hop, but I don't think that my creative expression should be limited just to those things. The more we are able to step outside of those social conventions of what people expect us to do, the more we can get to the root of what we're supposed to do. In this place called Tobacco Road. 1619, the white lion takes the first group of black slaves to a colony in Virginia. Over the next 250 years, 12 million Africans were captured and transported to the Western world. Through civil war, reconstruction, Jim Crow, and the civil rights movement, the stench of racism pervades American institutions still. Through systemic discrimination, legislation, and violence, this year is no different. I think a lot of really important conversations happened last summer. It was the first time I ever saw a real consolidated global effort 
to combat racism. However, we haven't actually accomplished the goal. We've just taken a couple steps and I don't think that we should look at it as a trend. I think we should look at it as a lifestyle. Cross country has the potential to be really powerful because it brings in other genres like pop, R&B, hip hop, gospel. Blending those things together necessarily brings people from all corners of the earth and the audience is going to be diverse. They're going to necessarily learn something. You know, sometimes I will get messages from very close-minded people who will say, this isn't country music, you're ruining this thing that I love. But a lot of those perspectives are rooted in racism and I'm not in the business of pacifying racists. I'm in the business of converting them. What I stand for is unity and community and, and breaking down barriers and telling your story. And I think all of those things are important in America and around the world. And so where I wanna go right now, it's just however many people I can inspire to putting differences aside to listen to someone else's story, that's important to me.